Hello, Moogly here with another audio tool mini tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to do another delay type, but we are going to attempt to um, sample, synthesize, recreate, uh, simulate, if you will, um, a tape delay. Okay, so a tape delay is an older delay type. Uh, it doesn't use electronic circuitry per se, it uses recording tape. So, um, you, you know, have a basically a loop of tape, right? And it would record on one side, and it would play back on the other side. So however long it took to get from the record head to the playback head um, is how long your delay was. And then the playback head would regenerate back to the record head, and so on. But see, each time, just like recording on a tape, there would be some some degeneration, basically some um, some loss of quality, um, and oftentimes a little bit of pitch flutter. And that is now it's a really desirable effect. And those old tape delay units go for big bucks. So how can we do this in Audio Tool? I've actually been trying for this for a long time, and I think I finally got it nailed pretty good. So here's what we do. First of all, um, concepts here. We're going to run this as an aux send, and what we want to do is basically trickle out a little bit of sound over time, okay, and then have each of those little trickles of sound going to multiple delay units, okay. Um, you could really take this concept even further than than I take it, but uh, you know that that's for another show, I guess, okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run five P delays, okay? And um, I used to use regular delays, but the P delays will give us that pitch flutter, okay? We're going to need two splitters sequentially, okay? We're going to need five slopes. Which uh, again is a is a filter pedal, so each time that's the degradation of the signal quality. It's going to get filtered by just a little bit, and then we can't run this through a mini mixer because there's only four channels. So we're going to have to run this into a cobalt, which is fine. Um, all it does is pan and level, um, and that's that's all we really need. And then the cobalt is going to run back into our aux send. Okay, so here's the signal flow. Uh, let's get that guy out of the way. So, um, we'll talk levels and stuff like that in a second, but I'm going to turn all my levels up as I go. So, the signal flow goes into the splitter. This splitter gets split again, giving us one, two, three, four, five channels. <laughs> five channels. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Channel one. No, it's not. It's whatever. It's channel three. I don't really care what order they go in. It really doesn't matter what order they go in. Just hook them up. Okay, so the splitter's out into the P delay in. Yeah. And this takes a little bit of, of doing. I wish this this uh, this audio tool program had macros so you could have like an entire setup like there. Tough to do though. So uh, anyways. P delay outs into the slope ins. And the last but not least, the slope outputs into the cobalt. Hey, into the cobalt mixer. Boink. And boink. And boink you got it all right levels are all the way up here that's okay all right now we need to turn levels all the way up here um, and the other thing we need to do is to think about uh, think about how this is going to work in terms of our desires for our delay okay um, with this with this signal kind of trickling out of here um, and then it's going to go pop into each of these delays and each of these delays are going to be set to um, 
effect. Let's do it now. We're going to set our level up and our feedback all the way down. Okay, feedback is all the way down. That gives us one repetition, just just one echo. Okay, so level up, feedback all the way down. Let me double check. All right, and last but not least, our frequencies here. And we're going to start these all the way up, just so we can have a baseline to work from here. Uh, resonance should be all the way down. Uh, we'll just leave the bandwidth where it is. Okay, so um, my first try, I started with this thing at uh, uh, like three or four sixteenth notes, and it didn't work as successfully as I would have liked. So I'm going to start it at One eighth note, okay, and then I, I like to crank the feedback up a little bit. All right, so we, what we want is for this thing to be trickling a good amount of sound out to each of our delays. Now we're not going to hear that individually. Um, it's only going to be giving the sound to the P delay. Okay, um, so first of all, let's let's leave the first one and the second one a normal pitch level. Now let's do it random, like first and third. This one we're going to decrease by just a few percent. This one we're going to increase by three percent. And then this one we're going to decrease like five. Okay, so we don't need much. Uh, and then of course we have the slope. Now this is we're going to have to tweak. We're going to this is going to take a little bit. Okay. Um, what we want to do though is get the frequency down. See at, at the height, and I don't know if this is accurate. Of uh, you know, ten thousand hertz. In other words, the cutoff is at ten thousand hertz, and that's not that high. I mean, it is, but it isn't. So, I mean, the highest note on the piano is like right around four thousand. So, I mean, whatever. Our hearing goes to twenty thousand. So I don't, I don't know if this is really accurate though. There's a few things in audio tool that aren't. Okay, so I like to hit start and stop. Make sure delay is turned up. Okay, so there. Okay, now we need to deal with our delay time. So we're going to go 16th notes. Um. And I'm gonna do all right so the thing to remember is that this is adding to our trickle delay of eighth note so an eighth note plus a sixteenth note is three sixteenths and then here an eighth note plus let's say three sixteenths and then five you see where I'm going with this of course Seven, and then we'll do like two eighth notes. Okay. Um. All right. So that's. And then if we change the feedback here. In fact, if we lower that a lot. See, so this the, the this delay is really kind of governing um, the, the the delay time more than anything else. Actually, I kind of don't like the. Uh, there's a little bit too much pitch change on some of these. I don't know. Maybe this last one is the five percent one. Maybe that's a little bit much. I also think that uh, to some sometimes I think that this output should also somehow regenerate back into an input, but that's talking crazy. You could do it like that. You could split the output, run it through another channel, and then just turn up the aux on that all the way, thereby putting more delay back into the delay 
just kind of regenerating it so that the pitch shift and stuff would pitch shift again. That would actually be kind of cool. Maybe we can try it at the end of this. So now we need to take our frequency and we need to kind of. I like to solo each output. So right click and hit solo. And then like listen to each one in turn. It should get like progressively darker. Okay, and this is at 897. So uh, let's start this guy at about 600 or so. And we'll hear how that sounds. Okay, that's pretty good, I guess. I might need to go a little bit lower, honestly. And this one we're going to start at like there, 250. 224. 221. 220, 221. Whatever it takes. And then this one we're going to start pretty low. 140, maybe less. Okay. So now each one should be like brighter and then it gets darker as it goes along. So. Alright, so there's our tape delay. Um. Now, if we did this regeneration thing that I was talking about, we would take a splitter, like a soul. Um, we would put one of these here, and then we would take one of these, and we would go into another channel. Let's say channel 16. We would turn this all the way down. We hit our prefader listen. We would turn off aux. <coughs> <laughs> yes, we can make feedback loops in audio tool in a digital environment. Um, I think that's pretty awesome. Okay, so there's our tape delay. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.